taking the escalator. Seventh floor. Supplemental suggestions and considerations. Let's start with some things to keep in mind when you may feel stuck at any point in the process. The first thing to always keep in mind is treatment. If, if things aren't working for you, you should consider treatment, whether it's psychiatry, outpatient. Um, if you're in treatment, consider getting more treatment. But if things aren't working, it's definitely something to consider. Another area to consider is community support. Even if you're not willing to go to 12-step meetings, there's other things out there. And with the internet, you can look in your area and, and find out what other kind of community support programs there are. But some of them are really helpful. It's important not to do this alone, to get some kind of help, even if it's from people who don't have drug problems, just to get out there and get help from other people and get some support. And never neglect self-exploration and looking at your own personal experience. There's things that you've probably tried and you know yourself better than you might realize. There's things that you know work for you and it's important to go back and look at what works for you. To, to keep that process of self-exploration going. Another area to re-examine when you get stuck is your situation with your friends and family. Yes, they can be difficult to deal with and they can be problematic, but at the same time, friends and family can be an incredible source of strength and encouragement. And you might be overlooking that. Another critical area to never let go of when you feel like you're stuck is that search for purpose. People get better when they finally find that meaningful place in life. Don't give up the search. And finally, never forget to think outside the box. The escalator is all about thinking about things in a different way. If the, what's the status quo is not working for you, you got to try to think about new ways to take tackle old problems. That's just a brief overview. It's likely there's going to be those points you get stuck, but if you look at the escalator, seventh floor, there's a lot of suggestions on things to help you get through those stuck points. Next in the seventh floor, there's two special considerations, two areas that can be challenging to deal with. The first one is personality issues. The escalator will teach you how to look at yourself and examine some of those personality issues and it starts with getting honest with yourself, which can be a lot more challenging than it seems. The next area is drug dealing. And believe me, most people would agree that drug dealing can be a harder addiction to quit than drug using. And there's a lot of special considerations when it comes to having to deal with that. So for escalator support groups, there's some guiding principles and they're a little different than the 12 steps principles, obviously. So let's go through a few of them. The first rule is that escalator support groups need to be non-confrontational. Support is about listening, empathizing, helping. No one wants to be around someone who's going to tell them off or tell them what to do. The next guiding principle is that escalator support groups need to be neutral. You shouldn't have to worry about people pushing their agenda on you. Um, it should be about being open to share what you want to share and not having to worry about judgment. The next guiding principle is that if someone is ultra super intoxicated, I'm talking wasted and it's noticeable and a distraction, it should really be a frowned upon coming to the group like that. If you're that wasted, try again tomorrow. The next principle is that counting clean time some people like to do it, and if they want to do it, that's fine, but it's not necessary. Quality over quantity. The next principle is simple. No one should have to reach in their pocket ever. There should never be any money collections for anything. It's not necessary. The next general principle is that people shouldn't be there to give advice. If somebody wants advice, if they're seeking advice, that's another thing. But the general rule should be just listen without giving unsolicited advice. The next principle is simple. Prayer is awesome, and if it works for you, go for it. 
but as far as a, a ritualistic group thing, there shouldn't be any organized group prayer. And by the same token, rituals in general, they, be just be, they become empty practices that are meaningless over time. Stay away from group rituals. Another critical rule is to share the time. It turns everyone off when someone dominates the group. It's important to get what you got to get out of you and then share the time for somebody else so they can share too. The next principle is about empathy, encouragement, and support. You know the group is, is working if those are hallmarks of the group. Empathy, encouragement, and support. The next principle is critical. No one should ever be mandated to an escalator support group. No judge, no probation officer should make someone sign a card. Groups should be open and voluntary. The next principle is that there's no status for being hardcore. The guy who's been to prison for 20 years is no better than the housewife who uh, drinks on the weekends. It doesn't matter. The last principle is just that dating is ill-advised. It's not a good idea. People are going to do it, but really it should be avoided. So if you're interested in starting an escalator support group in your area, please shoot me an email. I'll help you get started. It's right here, takingtheescalator at gmail.com.